pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To the class of 2021, on behalf of the class of 2020, I present you with this gift to represent the tight-knit community that is Clinton High School. On behalf of the class of 2021, I accept this gift with great gratitude. Thank, thank the class of 2020 for making the outstanding impression they have at CHS. I hope that we will continue your legacy for making CHS a better place. Thank you. Members of the school committee, Superintendent Meyer, Principal Cermak, Vice Principal Cash, administrators, teachers, parents, family members, distinguished members of the 50th reunion class of 1970, and members of the class of 2020. Welcome to a very special version of Clinton High School's annual graduation ceremony. On August 31st, 2016, we entered Clinton High School as students for the very first time. We were scrawnier, more innocent, and though it seems impossible, more immature. Many of us wanted nothing more than to find our lockers, keep our heads down, and give ourselves a few weeks to figure things out. Instead, we found ourselves in this very room, greeted by Mr. Hastings. We were told that our first introduction to this new home was going to consist of taking a lap around the school in all our 14-year-old glory while being cheered on by the upperclassmen. This was not some hazing ritual orchestrated by Mr. Hastings. It was our first chance to engage in a storied CHS tradition. Growing up, we all heard of Powder Puff, Friday Night Football Games, and the Senior Parade. We knew that on the last day of senior year, the graduating class ran the halls of CHS, being cheered on by teachers, administrators, and fellow students. Just as that last lap symbolized going out into the world with the support of our classmates and teachers, the first lap marked our entrance into the CHS family. And so, as embarrassing as it was, it showed us all the type of school we were entering, one built on community and tradition. As we walked the halls the first time, being cheered on by students we would soon consider friends, mentors, and role models, we all had images of who we would be when it was our turn to take freshmen under our wing, our turn to be older and wiser, our turn to make one final lap around CHS. Our life as it would be on May 29th, 2020, was never clearer than it was on that first day. With that date in mind, we embarked on our journey. Within the first month, many of us had already adapted to the time-honored rituals. Sitting in the back of the fan section at Friday night football games, ignoring the upperclassmen, yelling from below, telling us to be louder, we quickly picked up our school song. All hail the green and gold. We got dressed up excitedly and nervously for our first homecoming, not knowing what to expect for our first real school dance. And although Spirit Week was nothing like we ever imagined, we still beat the seniors in our very first Powder Puff game. By the time Thanksgiving rolled around, we thought we had this whole high school thing figured out. It's amazing how wrong we were, because over time, without even realizing it, it became clear that having an extraordinary high school experience, a Clinton high school experience, isn't just watching, is not about the big stereotypical moments. It isn't just watching the Gales play under the Friday night lights. It's about getting together after for a Big Mac and some fries. It isn't about winning Spirit Week two years in a row. It's about starting our lift up two days before it's due and staying at school so late to finish that the janitors kick us out. It's not about getting perfect grades. It's about coordinating with your friends first to try to get the same class schedule. It isn't about winning homecoming queen. It's about running to the calf in our bare feet as soon as the food comes to be first in line for pizza. High school is about the things behind the things, the little moments we take for granted, the routines we become accustomed to, and the people that become part of our lives. That is what makes these last two months so difficult. 
It isn't just that we are missing out on our class trip to Six Flags, singing our class songs to our parents at baccalaureate, dancing one, time, fi one final time at our senior banquet, and finally making our way across the graduation stage in Central Park on June 6th. It isn't just that we got curbside pickup for our caps and gowns and have been assigned different time slots to walk across our auditorium stage. Sure, our class had to miss out on many of the rites of passage of being a senior gale, but those rites of passage mean nothing compared to missing out on the last few months of whipping into the school parking lot at 724, scribbling out, scribbling out homework assignments the class before they are due, or having long, deep conversations with friends during social hour, I mean, tutorial. We didn't even know Friday, March 13th was going to be our last time in Clinton High School. Worst of all, we missed out on our chance to give, to give Principal Cermak a run for his money as his first graduating class, finally taking revenge on him for abandoning us as class advisor. It is okay to recognize that this isn't what we expected, it isn't what we wanted, and it certainly isn't what we deserved. But just as we, just as we have been surprised by four years of wins and losses, new friendships, report cards, in college acceptances, I challenge you, my fellow classmates, to think of these times as another in a long string of imperfections, losses, and false starts that have led to this utterly perfect Clinton High School experience. We left nothing on the table. Every step of the way, we made these four years our own. Nothing, not even a global pandemic, can take that away from us. And so, we may not get our traditional final lap, but perhaps more than any other class in recent memory, we have embodied what that last trip around the halls is meant to represent. We have truly learned to appreciate the time we spent together, the memories we made, the relationships we formed. We have learned that even sure things, tradition, community, and family can't be taken for granted. A very close friend of mine taught me that goodbyes are too sad, goodbyes are too final. So over and out, class of 2020. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Stephen Meyer, Superintendent of Schools. Good morning. I'd like to start by acknowledging all of the family, friends, staff members, administrators, and school committee members who have worked so hard to make today possible. I'd also like to give special recognition to our 50-year class, the class of 1970. And finally, to the class of 2020. I know your year didn't end the way you pictured it, but congratulations, you did it. The school year has been a historic one that we will not soon forget. One that has been dominated by factors beyond our control that have tremendously impacted our daily lives and changed many traditions that we have come to expect. In the fall, we dealt with Triple E concerns, which forced our sporting events to move to the afternoons. Friday night lights were soon replaced with Friday mid-afternoons. Once the fall season ended, we had two snow days in a row right after Thanksgiving break and one the next week. At that point, I know the class of 2020 was happy because they knew they wouldn't have to make those days up. Although who knew then we wouldn't have another major snow until the spring. That brings us to March. I'll never forget the angst and pressure that I felt as I struggled with the prospect of closing school for two weeks, a closing that began on March 16th. Then the governor stepped in. Two weeks became three, three became six, and finally, schools were closed for the remainder of the year. As we were forced to transition to remote learning, I wanna congratulate the class of 2020 for managing to stick with their coursework, and in light of all the adversity many were facing, you managed to complete your graduation requirements and continue to solidify your plans for the fall. I know this has been a challenging few months, not only for the class of 2020, but for their families and the school community as well. I wanna thank everyone for playing a role in supporting our students and helping to make sure the class of 2020 was able to successfully graduate and be recognized for their accomplishments along the way. This brings me to the class of 1970. To the class of 1970, I look forward to attending your reunion this fall. 1970 was an eventful year as well. It was the first year Earth Day was celebrated. It was also the last year the Beatles would release an album. 
The war in Vietnam continued as did the anti-war protests across the country. On April 13th, 1970, the Apollo 13 spacecraft exploded, an incident which threatened to be the biggest failure in NASA history. However, the team at NASA was able to come together, create a new mission on the fly, and return the crew home safely. This ability to overcome adversity was memorialized in the 1995 movie Apollo 13 by the line, with all due respect, sir, I believe this will be our finest hour. So to the class of 2020, remember, adversity builds character. Being able to support each other and fulfill your graduation requirements in the midst of a pandemic is a type of adversity that has not been faced by any graduating class in 100 years. I know that it's difficult now to cope with missing out on most of your traditional senior year activities. But I assure you, you have plenty of great memories and experiences ahead of you in life. While these milestones seem so important to, with you today, to you today, with each passing day, they will slowly seem less and less important. Soon enough, you will be creating new memories. You'll be graduating college. You'll be starting a career, eventually getting married or starting a family. As you grow older and gain that perspective in life, I hope that you'll be able to look back at this time and say to yourself, if I can overcome that adversity, I can do anything. I know that with the strength you have gained through this experience, that the class of 2020 is destined to do great things. You will be leaders and advocates determined to help prevent future generations from facing the adversity you have faced. I have no doubt that someday as an adult, you will look back at the courage you developed during this period of your life and think to yourself, how did I do that? What could have been a disaster, you turned into your finest hour. History will never forget the class of 2020. I wish you all the best in the future. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce the valedictorian of the Clinton High School class of 2020, Anya Frisch. Good morning. Imagine you were told at the beginning of your senior year that the final moments you had worked for since you were a child would be ripped away from you. What would you have done differently? Today is filled with a sense of regret as we look back on yesterday's escapades, longing to live in it again, even if just for a moment. But I don't want to speak about the unpredictability of today. Instead, I focus on the occasions of yesterday and the promises of tomorrow. There's a Japanese idiom known as Ichigo Ichie, which translates roughly to, for this time only. It is a reminder that every moment is an exclusive encounter that cannot be repeated, and thus an encouragement to cherish each moment you live, as each is a once in a lifetime experience. Growing up in a small town like Clinton, Many of us have been together since our births and for 13 years of schooling with people coming and going along the way to constitute this ambitious bunch of graduates. Only a class like ours can say they remember staying at school until nine o'clock to edit the lip dub or watch it being edited and praying that the alarms didn't go off or winning practically every event during spirit week and dominating our upperclassmen years other than, the, other than the tug of war. We don't talk about that. Being Gales, we also share the memory of not being able to feel our feet at Friday night football games in the freezing cold, then warming up together at McDonald's afterwards. The great times we had can't be accredited to the students alone. I'd like to thank all of the support systems that have backed us along the way, beginning with our teachers and staff. More importantly, the bonds formed between some teachers and our students are ones that won't be easily forgotten. Only a school the size of Clinton High would make it possible for me to have known more than one of my teachers since I was born. Not many students can say that they've traveled across the world with some of their educators or that they have a teacher to go to in any situation. Whether it be a reassuring voice to cry to when you're anguished, one to supply you with snacks and a blanket during your study, or the comic relief at the end of a stressful week, the teachers at CHS are of a rare kind. Furthermore, I want to thank the parents and guardians a fundamental part of a child's growth throughout their school years is positive support from their families, and I am immensely grateful for the fact that I can say the families of us graduates have exceeded all we could have asked for. 
Whether you plan on returning to your roots and establishing your adult legacy in Clinton, or the only part of your new life includes infrequent travels to your hometown, make sure to swing by every once in a while. Visit an old friend. See who is being memorialized this week on Memory Rock, or if the fountain is running in Central Park. Take a walk by the reservoir, our school's beautiful backyard, and maybe stop by to watch a game or a performance. I encourage each of you to bear in mind the concept of Ichigo Ichie, as you remember the high school experiences that you may have taken for granted yesterday and cherish each moment throughout the adventures of tomorrow. Because yesterday encompasses all of these remarkable memories and today's events are disconcerting and ever changing, but who's to say that tomorrow won't be the best day of your life? Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Jonathan Ramos, salutatorian. I want you, the class of 2020, to take a moment and think about the past four years of high school. For instance, many of you will reminisce upon Spirit Week memories and other unique activities that CHS has to offer. I want you to think and imagine what you want out of the next four years and, you want, and where you want to be in the next 10 and so on. As for myself, I imagined standing on the baseball diamond all spring, laughing and competing with my teammates. This was definitely going to be the highlight of my senior year and easily the most anticipated moment. Unfortunately, due to all the chaos in the country, our temporary detour on the path of life is for the better. It is my obligation and duty to tell you why. Let's talk about perspective for a moment. There are two main ways one can view life, with a mindset full of growth or a fixed mindset. Think of these mindsets like a pair of glasses. Throughout life, we will wear both pairs. We should all strive to wear the growth glasses more than we wear fixed glasses because this is the key to success. Every day, waking up with a mindset that is open-minded and set for growth allows there to be limitless opportunities for personal development each day. People that commit to this mindset find themselves being tremendously resilient. They can do an amazing job bouncing back from any circumstance that comes into their lives. I see many in the class of 2020 already possessing this mindset. For those that think they cannot think in this way, you are wrong. Talent and intelligence are sought after characteristics in all aspects of life, from schools to jobs to even college admission decisions. In life, we will all experience rejections, which I myself saw as failure until I realized that these are just small learning moments in an overall transformation. This way, we do not have to attach our identity solely to results, but attach our identity to knowledge. When this is done, the reasons why we failed are stored into our mind as knowledge, allowing us to be more wise than before we were rejected. Please, just think about the power of knowledge. The difference between the successful and unsuccessful is knowledge and application of it. The brain has so much power that we can continue to learn until the day we die. The power possessed in all our brains is not comparable to anything this world has ever seen. Understanding this information, we should all find inspiration and hope in this fact. The individuality of everyone in this class shows that possibilities are endless. I want us to keep a growth mindset as we go through life as adults. This will not be easy, but surely be promising when we all figure out that our potentials are only 1% understood. These potentials have been maximized throughout high school due to the amazing people and teachers around us. Our lives would have been a mess if it, not, if it were not for the front office running the entire school seamlessly. Their dedication rubbed off on the students to be the best students that we could be. We were only the best students because we, we were only the best students because of the phenomenal teachers in this school as well. Every single one of them has gone above and beyond the written expectations of their job. Teachers at CHS are far more loving and caring than any other school around. The teachers are always willing to speak to any student about any issue they are having, whether it pertains to academics or not. This community aspect is also radiated by Mr. Cermak and Mrs. Cash. They are always involved with stressful situations, but can always make anyone smile at a moment's notice. The people of CHS are amazing, and the class of 2020 will be forever grateful for all the sacrifices they have made into making our four, well, actually three and two, three and two thirds years at CHS memorable. Class of 2020, cherish these moments that we have together and never forget them. Always remember to keep your mindset fixed on growth and thankfulness. You will be exactly where you envision yourself to be. 
It was an honor to be a part of this class, and I hope you will all be blessed for the upcoming years of your life. From your fellow classmate and friend, thank you all and be proud of all your accomplishments. Now I'd like to introduce my dear friend and high honor student, Ashley Nozick. Hey class of 2020. They told us that our four years would fly by, that the weeks leading up to graduation would be some of the best weeks of our lives, that the memories we would make together would last a lifetime, that this would be our last chance to really enjoy being kids together before we part ways and move down our own future paths. But I think it's safe to say that no one could have predicted a global pandemic would turn our worlds upside down, causing us to have to social distance from one another for the foreseeable future. It has meant that everyone has had to make sacrifices, some more than others. But the silver lining? We have had to think outside the box to make sure we get to experience a meaningful ceremony that celebrates the success of our high school careers, even though we can't all be together. When I first learned that I would be speaking in front of my class at graduation, I pictured us sitting together under the hot sun in Central Parks with our families and friends looking on as we walked across the stage just as so many classes did before us. It felt like a rite of passage. We worked towards this moment for what felt like our whole lives. And I could go on and on about how disheartening and disappointing it is to not be able to celebrate in the spotlight altogether. But it's no use dwelling on the negative and what should have been. At times I have been guilty of letting the unfairness of the situation get to me, but instead we need to look past that and find comfort in the fact that our class will be remembered forever, no matter what. How we confront the challenges life has thrown our way is how we can define our senior legacy moving forward. In all seriousness, we shouldn't feel slighted or cheated by how COVID-19 altered our high school experience. If anything, we should feel privileged because this pandemic has given us precious time to reflect on our lives and look ahead to our futures with a new perspective. Although we are all feeling different emotions at this moment, because of the uncertainty in the world right now, life will go on and everything that has been thrown our way will eventually pass. Now more than ever is the time for us to dream big and spread our wings. If this virus has taught us anything, it is that nothing in life is guaranteed. So we must make the most out of the time we have now, take those risks, make those mistakes, and learn from them in order to find ourselves and our places in this world. We're told from a young age that we can do and be whoever we want when we grow up. And then we let the real world and the opinions of others sway us to change those dreams, to make them fit into a certain mold so that we follow the steps of a standard society. Today in this moment, I challenge each and every one of you to not do this. I challenge you all to instead chase after the things that make you feel alive, the things that set your soul on fire. To never settle, to be unapologetically you, even when the world tries to tell you otherwise. Some of you might have been counting down the days until graduation so you can get on with your lives. And for others, this is the next step in your academic careers. For some, that might mean going to college, getting a degree, and that's fine. It could mean going right to work, or it may mean heading off to boot camp, and that's fine too. And if it means booking a one-way flight to Hawaii with no plans beyond that, then I'm telling you, that's also fine. There's no step-by-step -step process to become successful. There's only hard work, determination, a little fear, and the willpower to never let reality stop you from doing what you love. Trust the process, be patient, know that everything happens for a reason, and that the more you experience, the more you will learn. The journey does not begin today though. It began a long time ago. Today just marks the day that all of our paths finally split down unique roads. As I wrap this up, I'd like to end with a quote by Michael Josephson. Take pride in how far you've come. Have faith in how far you can go, but don't forget to enjoy the journey. So class of 2020, as our time here is done, I hope you all look forward to whatever comes next with enthusiasm and hope. Live well, be happy, and enjoy the little moments because that's what life is all about. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce high honor student, Daniel Villacorta. Hey everybody. If any of you were actually here right now, I'd say it was great to see all of you. 
I'm sure that the massive contagious elephant in the room has already been talked about in great detail in the previous speeches, so I'll do my best to avoid that train of thought. My very first memory in the Clinton public school system was me crying my eyes out in the elementary school library as my mom was signing me up for classes because I thought I'd hate it so much. Twelve years later, I'm glad to say that I was proven mostly wrong about that thought. I could stand up here and feed you all a story about the ups and downs of a Seventh-day Adventist Latino living in a predominantly Irish Catholic town, but I'm not going to do that because that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to talk about what matters to me and what's always mattered, you. I'm here to talk about how you've all grown up alongside me and how I wouldn't trade it for anything. Whether you're one of my close friends, a beloved teacher, or even just someone I shared a class with, the interactions I had with you day to day are what made my time here really worth it to me. Because at the end of the day, this high school is just a building. These hallways are just hallways. And these classrooms are just regular rooms. It's the people, the students, the staff, and the teachers that make this class of 2020 what it's really about, what really builds the foundation of it. I remember we crushed all the other grades at Spirit Week. We danced that prom till we couldn't go into school the next day from being sick. And we were just causing chaos in these halls the whole time. And I wouldn't trade it for anything, and I'm so glad it happened. Now, I probably wasn't the best at showing it, but I really cared about all of you. I mean, I'd have really said anything about it or shown it, but the interactions I had with all of you, those are what made it count. And I'm here to tell you all a really important message. We've grown up being told that our GPAs, our college decisions, our test scores, that those are what define who we are. I'm here to tell you that that's not true. Each and every one of you is an individual human being with a thought, with an opinion, with a personality. Each and every one of you is more than just a number in some school's computer system. And right now, now that you've graduated, all of you have a choice. You have all been given the choice of what you want to do with the rest of your life to pursue what it is you want to do for the rest of your career. And after having grown up with all of you, I'm proud to say I know you'll all make the right choice. After having grown up with you all these years, I'm so glad to be here now, witnessing this moment with all of you. And I'm so proud of you all. I'm sorry if I repeated anything that the last speech just said. Being last in line doesn't really, give a lo uh, doesn't really leave me a lot of room for originality, but I'm trying my best. And in that word, feel free to toss your caps in the air from the comfort of your homes. And I'd say good luck to you all. But after having grown up with you, I know you won't need it. That's all the time I have, and I'd like to introduce Mr. Cermak, our beloved principal and the man of the hour. Good morning. First, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you to the parents, guardians, grandparents, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, school committee, teachers and staff, and all the people in and out of the Clinton community that has played a part in shaping the lives of the soon-to-be Clinton High School graduates, class of 2020. There's a small placard in my office that says, smooth seas never created a skilled sailor. When I bought it to decorate my office, I thought, hmm, that's nice. Now I am beginning to appreciate its meaning. Starting this new year as a principal, I would never have dreamed of what changes would be happening and decisions that needed to be made. Yet here we are. Seniors, throughout this year alone, you have dealt with night games being canceled due to Triple E, had your school closed, spring athletic season canceled, and completed your academic year through remote learning, and are now watching your graduation ceremony as a movie. No other class in history that I've ever heard of has gone through this. We have all dealt with rough seas this year, and I believe coming out on the other side, we will all be more skilled sailors. Soon you'll be moving on to doing something new, whether it be the military, full-time employment, college, or some other career readiness program. Your paths will take you in a new direction. 
This can be scary. I was nervous coming into this year being a new principal, but I knew I had a lot of support from teachers, staff, students, and the Clinton community. You may be trying something new and unknown, and even maybe without your friends and family there with you. I understand. Throughout your life, you will have choices. You can sit and watch, or you can make that leap. I told myself when I was in my late teens, right around senior year in high school, that I would never look back and say I wish I. I'm not saying to take that leap of faith every time an opportunity arises, but to take the time and assess the opportunity. If the opportunity presents itself and it looks like a path you may want to choose, then do it. You can always go back to what you know. If it isn't a path you want to choose, then don't. And keep on doing whatever you're doing. But at least give the opportunity, the time and thought, so you can honestly say that I chose to or not to. That is your choice. And also remember, by not making a choice, you really are making a choice. Now, as, as I look back on my life, are there many times when maybe I should have gone after that opportunity? Absolutely. Are there times when I made a poor choice? Definitely. But no matter what, I can say that these were my choices and I can never look back and say, I wish I, because I truly did make that promise to myself and I kept it. Hopefully you'll do the same. Your future depends on the choices you make. Always be true to yourself and don't be afraid because you are stronger than you think and more skilled than you'll ever know. Graduating class of 2020, congratulations on reaching the goal of graduating from high school. You have worked hard and deserve it. Good luck with whatever path you choose and remember, you will always have a family at Clinton High School. Now, I would like to introduce Mrs. Jamie Cash, Assistant Principal. Hoy es un día muy importante, muy especial, el día de la graduación de la clase de 2020. Para mí, es un honor felicitar a todos los miembros de esta clase, reconociendo sus esfuerzos, sus éxitos y la dedicación que han dado a su educación. En nombre de nuestra comunidad, los maestros, los consejeros y el director aquí de la Escuela Secundaria de Clinton, estamos muy orgullosos de la clase de 2020 y sus logros. A pesar de los retos, la pandemia y sus luchas. Esta clase triunfó. Felicidades. Y a los padres y a las madres que siempre nos apoyan. Gracias. Quiero agradecer su confianza en todos nosotros su dedicación y su amor para esta comunidad de Clinton. Entiendo sus luchas para que mantengan una buena vida para su familia y sus hijos. Pero nunca se olvidan que nuestra comunidad es representado por sus valores influencia, prioridad en familia y su identidad latina. Y recuerda, tú siempre eres un Clinton Gale por vida. Les, les extrañaremos, pero nunca, nunca les olvidaremos. 
gracias. And now I would like to introduce Mr. Al De Silva. Bom dia. Parabéns a todos os alunos que estão graduando hoje. Você superou muitas adversidades e obstáculos para, para, para chegar aqui. Muitos de vocês estão aqui porque os seus pais ou os seus avós que é dar para fazer uma melhor vida com mais oportunidades do que, do que eles tiveram. Durante todo o tempo na Clinton High School, muitos de vocês tiveram que assumir diferentes responsabilidades enquanto estudavam. Alguns de vocês uh, tive que trabalhar para ajudar a sustentar as suas famílias. Outros tive que ficar em casa, tomar conta dos miúdos uh, mais jovens da família, enquanto os seus pais trabalhavam em dois empregos só para pagar a renda no fim do mês. Obrigado por os pais. Obrigado por ter confiar, uh, confiar na nós na Clinton High School para cuidar dos seus filhos. Obrigado por todo o trabalho duro e sacrifícios que vocês fiz em apoio a eles. Há muitos lugares nos Estados Unidos para se viver e estamos felizes por você escolher o Clinton. É uma comunidade da qual esses alunos sempre vão ficar um parte. Não importa onde seus embaixões vão levar, você sempre vai ficar a parte dessa comunidade. Parabéns, classe de 2020. Foi um prazer completar esta parte da sua jornada da vida com vocês. Nós estamos a grosso de tu. Obrigado. Anya Irene Frisch, Valdictorian. Regan Bridget Gannon, High Honor Student and Class President. Emily Nicole Bolio, High Honor Student and Class Vice President. Lily Catherine Morin, High Honor Student and Class Secretary. Jonathan Dawan Ramos, Salutatorian and Class Treasurer. Olivia Ann Ago, High Honors. Kevin Josue Aguilar. Colby G. Armstrong. Diarnell Jomeli Asensio. Johansi Morali Asensio. Jairo Daniel Avalos. Michael Ross Bavuso. Marcus I. Borsico. Aaliyah Victoria Andrea Brown, 
honors. Brittany Mercedes Brown. Caroline Ellen Burns, honors. Catherine Calderon. Juan Campos Jr. Isabella Patricia Caruth Soto. Brevin A. Casella. Honors. Alexandra Leigh Chabot. Angel Giovanni Borba Cologne, high honors. Alexis Summer Como. Patrick N. Conroy. High honors. Richard H. Corelli. Honors. Francisco Cortez, Jr. Jacob R. Cronin, honors. Simon M. Cruz. Elizabeth Margaret Cermak. High honors. Preston C. Danby. Alexandria Violet Delory, high honors. Julia Cecile Despotopoulos. Ireland, Elizabeth DeLevitz, honors. Sabrina, Angie, Eugene.
Serena Soraya Ballette. Juan Marcos Feliz. Carly Rose Fleming. Owen William Giroux. Robert J. Gibbons. High honors. Emmanuel Fernando Gomez. Honors. Leanna Mary Hall. Michaela Francis Gumpright. Daniel J. Yakabuchi. Tyler Paul Jackson. Emily Elizabeth Jordan, high honors. Galen T. Kittle McCollum, high honors. Ryan Joseph Crocus. Chanel Anne Labossier. Bridget A. Labrie. Honors. Zachary M. Lamb. Cynthia Victoria LaRoe. High honors. Haven Ann LeClaire. High honors. Andy Lika. High honors. Nathan Fitzgerald Lipka, high honors. Trevor Allen Lonchitis. Karen P. 
Rocky Lopez Calderon. Justin Howard Lowe. Matthew J. Lowe, high honors. Allison Rose Mailhoit. Christian Dean Mates. Megan McAndrews, honors. Autumn M. McGurk. Gilcrest Connor Patrick McNamara, high honors. Kelvin E. Mello Enriquez. Elora W. Mitchell, honors. Louis A. Montero. Honors. Thomas William Morse. Charles James Murphy, honors. Nolan Caston Neal, honors. Madison Amanda Neves. Ashley M. Nozick, high honors. Johnny Ogando Jr., honors. Anicia Dawn Parsons. Manny K. Patel. Miranda U. Paulino. Honors. Sheila Perez, high honors. J. 
Jacob, Daniel, Petri. Destiny, Jean, Preper, Honors. Liam Paul Pyatt, Honors. Abednego Lopez Rondina, High Honors. Jenna Elizabeth Russo, Honors. Michael Soa. Skylar R. Swazo Mason H. Taylor, High Honors Anna Marie Chiru. Andrew J. Tringali, High Honors. Dalton Jacob Torini, Honors. Christina M. Torini. Alexander Vargas. Mario. Santiago Vicente Daniel Andre Villacorta High Honors Matthew K. Ward High Honors Lloyd E. Williams, Jr. Lily Naomi Winslow. Elizabeth Grace Windsor, High Honors. Jacob Mountain Woods.
Jean Pablo Yancor. Katerina J. Zahariadis, High Honors. Ilamercy Zapata Sanchez. Also graduated, Giovanni Mark Serrano. I watched you grow from children to adolescents to adults. I have taught you, coached you, and was even your advisor. You and I are now both Clinton High graduates. I want to say thank you. Thank you for being as much part of my life as I was of yours. Congratulations, CHS graduates, class of 2020. Go get them, Gales.